Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Hastings from Gators Territory and I'm joined here today by UF signee Jonathan Odom. Uh, before we get started into this interview, I wanted to kind of give a quick rundown of Jonathan's recruitment. He had a bunch of offers in his junior senior season, but ended up committing uh, to Florida Gators in May 2019 before his senior season started up. Um, you know, along with being a sought after tight end in the 2020 recruiting cycle, Jonathan is the son of former Florida football player, Jason Odom. Jonathan, it's a pleasure to be joined by you today, man. Yeah, definitely. Uh, thanks for having me. Absolutely, man. Uh, so first off, before we really get started into the interview, just kind of talk to me about what you've been doing during the quarantine, uh, what your workouts have been like, that kind of stuff. Yeah, so I've really just been trying to get it where I can. You know, there's not – you just kind of do whatever you can, push-ups, sit-ups. My, I have, you know, like I said, I have a couple – close friends that I'm, I'm hanging out with, you know, no one really outside of my really tight circle. And one of my friends has an in, in home gym. So I go over there as much as I can. Um, I ordered a weight vest online. So just running with a weight vest, uh, push up a weight vest, sit ups with a weight vest, just anything you can do. Uh, I, my dad throwing me footballs. I mean, you know, he's not, doesn't have the best arm in the world, but you know, just try, like I said, you really just got to get it I, how you can right now. There's not really any, you know, order, you just got to, it's kind of all random, just trying to work out as much as you can, stay in shape and stay ready because it can happen on, you can go back at any time. And so. Do you kind of have like a set routine? Like you work out at a specific time in the day or a specific amount of days per week? Um, what's kind of been your schedule like? Um, honestly, it's really just, you know, I try and get about every, I try and do something every day. Obviously, sometimes it doesn't work out like that. My sleep schedule is all messed up, man. I'm going to bed in the early hours of the morning. So, um, really, anytime I just can get it, I'm, I'm, you know, trying to do something, at least 30 minutes of something a day, whether it's just running, you know, then some days just fo football stuff, running routes. Anything I can really get done is just, you know, and, and there's not really – I try to do some of the workouts that they sent me, and it's just hard, man. You're not having a full gym to be able to – go to barely no one has benches and anything so you know you gotta get it how you can absolutely man um and, and you know you mentioned it with florida sending you some of those uh workouts and uh you, you know it's tough being able to duplicate those those workouts at home uh, obviously you were looking to arrive on florida's campus next week what, what what are you hearing from them in terms of when you could realistic realistically uh get to uf get to gainesville yeah i mean it was like I said, it was supposed to be like May 4th, but um, it, like we've been talking, you know, it's we've heard some like early um, early June is the best case scenario. But, uh, you know, we, honestly, no one really knows. There's not really a set, like a set date. They're just hoping for June. But, you know, as long as this, you know, the, the curve kind of decreases and all that stuff, we'll be able to get up hopefully in June and start going. But I don't really know what, you know, the season holds and the dates of, you know, you don't know what, if we're going to have spring practices that are technically spring in the summer or if we're skipping spring completely. And if the season's starting on time, you know, all that stuff, it's just, I'm just trying to get up there as soon as possible and trying to, you know, have some sort of normal normality and, you know, order back again. That'll, that's what I'm looking forward to most. So are you going to still be able to enroll at UF and do online classes or? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm actually been doing that right now. I've been talking to um, talking to some of the people up there. And, um, you know, I'm definitely going to start UF classes here soon, whether in the next week or so, um, so I can, you know, get a head start and, and you know, be ready at any, at any time. And, uh, so I will definitely be doing online classes here s shortly and enrolling and uh, getting that whole process. So I'll be enrolled here pretty in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we're still proceeding with that process, but it's just all a matter of when we can get it back up on campus is what I'm looking forward to. So there's a little uncertainty as to when you will be getting on campus. You mentioned that June could potentially be um, a time where they're looking at, but it's still a lot of uh, things are up in the air right now. But when that time does arrive, you do get to Gainesville, uh, you're settled in, and you know, you're ready to join the football team. What are you really looking forward to the most about becoming a Florida Gator? Yeah, just really honestly, you know, just growing as a player and uh, as a guy and, you know, developing and making uh, relationships that will last longer after football. Um, you know, I'm already starting to get close with a lot of the guys there now. And, 
Um, you know, it's all about relationships and things like that at the end of the day. You know, football is a huge part of it. But, um, you know, it's great people before. That's why I ended up chase, uh, choosing, choosing it is, you know, it's just uh, – it was – yeah, that's the, just kind of looking forward to the most, just, you know, seeing everybody and, and you know, getting up there. Now, you mentioned that you talked to some of the players. Have you been able to speak with, like, Anthony Richardson, Richie Leonard, some of the guys who arrived on campus? And if so, what, what have they kind of been saying to you about that adjustment process? Yeah, I've been talking to Ant and, uh, and Richie. I was texting Richie actually, like, yesterday, I think. And, uh, you know, they, they said they loved it. You know, it's, it's hard. Um, you know, you got to adjust. It's not like high school. Um, it's definitely a challenge, but they said they loved it. And, and um, they, you know, they're so excited to have been up there and they can't wait to get back just like me. But I just want to get up there for the first time. And, uh, you know, they've kind of told me how, how it is for the first semester and, you know, what kind of the ropes and, you know, do's and don'ts and things like that. And talking to some of the older guys as well. And, you know, they just, you know, say it's going to be hard at first, but you really adjust. And from that point on, it's a lot of fun, you know, hard work, but, you know, Florida makes it a lot of fun. Now on top of forging those relationships with the players, you're obviously going to be building up those bonds with the coaching staff. Um, can you just kind of talk about what things have been like with Tim Brewster? Have you been able to speak with him? And if so, what's kind of been his message to you? Yeah, we've, we've been talking a lot. Um, you know, he's just kind of saying like, hey, man, we, you know, I've, you know, I get an opportunity and, it's, you know, to work and, you know, hope, hopefully get some playing time. You know, I, I basically get whatever I earn and um, telling me that, you know, he just can't, can't wait to get back and get back to work. And, you know, he's a big type of – he likes to get after it and, and it's all about the work with him. And, you know, he, he loves football and he has a passion for it and a passion for tight ends as his track record you can see. Uh, he just – and you know, it's a, it's a, he's a great coach, and I can't wait to get up there and work with him. We've been in contact usually about once or twice, uh, you know, every 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 other week. And uh, we talk, and, you know, he's ready to get back, and I'm ready to get up there. What do you feel like you can uh, do with him being kind of uh, your mentor, somebody that you're learning under the tutelage of? How do you feel like you can take your game to the next level with Brewster coaching you? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I think – he's going to be able to develop me in a lot of ways, you know, that I need it. Of course, I'm nowhere near as how good as, as how good as I can be as a player and, you know, and mentally and all that stuff. And I think he's going to be able to develop all aspects of that. And then having a guy like, like Pitts and, um, you know, even, even Keon and just, you know, some of my closest friends on the team right now, you know, just being able to learn from them, you know, Keon kind of coming fresh off of what I'm about to go through and, you know, kind of show me, you know, like how he just, he just experienced it all. And, you know, Pitts, him being a veteran and uh, really just soaking up everything I can learn from him. And, you know, one of the best tight ends in the country, a uh, really cool dude and being able to learn from him. And, uh, you know, it's a really good position for me and I can't wait to get up there. So you brought up Kyle Pitts, uh, one of the most productive tight ends in college football this past season. What do you feel like, the possibilities are for you going into Dan Mullen's offense. You know, how, how do you feel like you can kind of take your game uh, another step with how well he likes to get the ball to to tight ends? Uh, wh what do you kind of see for yourself in Dan Mullen's offense? Yeah, definitely. I think, um, you know, even as I first get up there, I think, you know, I could be on the field, you know, greatly with all three of them. You know, we have, we're going to have a lot of great tight ends in the room. And, and uh, I think we all have different skill sets and, you know, we all have different mismatch abilities and that's what coach Mullen's all about is the mismatches and he finds the way to use them. And, you know, he uses, I think I can just be that, you know, uh, eventually develop into that every down tight end and being able to uh, block at any, uh, at the point of the attack and, and help in the run game a lot. And then also being able to be a vertical threat. And I think a lot of people coming out of high school kind of underrated me as a pass catcher and, um, you know, Obviously not the coaches that recruited me. Um, there was a different story with them. Uh, but I think that I'll be able to develop my game a lot in the, the passing game and uh, be a, a deep threat there. And, you know, you have two, three great tight ends on the field at one time. You can't cover all – you can't double cover all of them. So somebody's going to be open. And uh, that, you know, you got two, six, five-plus tight ends and and me and Pitts. And then you got Keon, who's uh, – really good route runner. He can do a lot of things, great hands. Um, he's just as versatile as anyone else. And it's hard to, you know, to stop a three-headed monster. 
Absolutely, man. Uh, definitely going to be fun looking at uh, Florida's offense next year, what they can do with Kyle Trask, you know, kind of being the starter from the get-go. So that will definitely be very interesting. And uh, just looking broadly at uh, your college career, um, this is kind of a two-part question here, but what are the goals that you have for yourself in your freshman season? And then also what are the goals that you have for yourself by the time you finish college, like just the overall three- to five-year experience in college? Yeah, definitely. Um, my freshman season, you know, it's really just go up there and learn as much as I can, and, you know, play as much as I can, get on the field as much as I can, work for, you know, every minute that I get on the field and help out in any way and, you know, just kind of learn, you know, learn the game from the older guys and, you know, how how to work it and maneuver it because it's all different in high school. You know, you can't just beat people off raw talent. Everyone's faster, especially in the SEC and bigger and stronger. And so just, you know, get up, getting up there. My big goals are to uh, get stronger, get faster. You know, a lot of that's going to be attributed to Coach Savage. You can see he always does a great job with developing his players. And I'm excited to get, you know, I know it's going to be tough, but I'm excited to get there and develop more and uh, really transform into that prototype tight end. And, you know, that's kind of really my goal for my freshman year is the developing in uh, my skill set mentally, physically, you know, whether it's on and off the field, you know, in the weight room, speed training and you know as just a, a football player because at the end of the day we aren't track runners we aren't you know we aren't all these other things we're football players and that's what I want to develop at the most and uh you know kind of for my uh three to five year experience it's just you know being the best you know kind of enjoying it not always looking to the, towards the next game just kind of being in the moment and uh really soaking it all up because you know these my as my dad said told me these would be the best best three to five years of your life and you know don't take it for granted and you know hopefully I can catch my dream of playing in the NFL one day. No doubt about it man and um, just looking past uh, the football field and uh, looking at yourself as a recruiter I know you've been someone who's kind of talked to players on the recruiting trail about Florida who are some of the guys that you're kind of um, after and what's kind of been your pitch to them? Yeah, um, I just I'm, – I'm really anyone. I kind of hit up anyone that I, I just see, just, you know, tell them about, you know, what it is. You know, I don't want anyone to just make a – I don't want anyone – like me, my decision was final when I got that feeling, you know, that I, it was Florida. You know, at one point I had written Florida off, and, and I just always kept an open mind. And uh, I went and saw over – took over 25 visits to the colleges and, you know – I ended up just having a gut feeling and I followed it and Florida and I just haven't turned back since. And I kind of just tell people like, Hey, you know, uh, kind of the same thing coach Mullen told me, go see everywhere. You know, if Florida's not the place for you, you know, that's, that's okay. But um, you're going to, you know, they, they hate us cause they ain't us. But uh, um, you know, if, if it's not the place for you, then it's not the place for you. But you know, it's, it's the place for a lot of people. And if you want to be a big time college football player and play in one of the best environments ever and, um, develop as a player and as a guy and uh, all that, you know, Florida's the place. All right, so I know it may be a little bit of a mute point now, man, but can you just kind of talk to me about you saying that you wrote Florida off for kind of a period of time and then them just coming back into the mix and, you know, securing a commitment from you and signing you? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I, I kind of told – this has kind of been a big – a uh, big point in my recruiting. I, I kind of told every college that before they recruited me that I had no interest in um, changing positions to O line at all. You know, uh, I, I'll, I'll try anything else, but I told everyone that I'm I'm not I'm not going to play line. I'd rather go somewhere smaller and play uh, tight end or uh, you know somewhere else because uh, I feel like I'm a playmaker and um, and you know Florida kind of uh, waited. They didn't they didn't suggest that they wanted me to play O line, but they kind of waited at the beginning to see what I was going to develop into. Everyone else was kind of pulling the trigger early, you know, left, right. You know, I was getting off to Alabama, LSU, all that stuff. Florida was kind of waiting, and I was, like, kind of confused on what it was. And, and uh, they ended up, you know, taking a long time. And then after my junior season tape, which ended up blowing up, like, 30,000 views plus, and, um, and they saw that, you know, I really developed because – I uh, at first I was a little bit clumsy you know it was growing a whole lot growing with six six inches in a year I was clumsy and all that stuff my sophomore year and then my junior year I really grew into my body and became a, a really a big threat in the receiving game and the run game and uh, coming into a true tight end form and I kind of wrote them off I was like you know they didn't really believe in me things like that and 
you know, I went on my visit and then they kind of explained to me, like, listen, we, you, you know, you told us that you didn't want to play a line and, you know, we weren't going to recruit you if, um, if we didn't think that you could play, you know, the position that you wanted because you told us that and, and uh, they kind of, you know, said that we saw your tape and we, you know, we waited for you to develop and see what you're going to develop into. And, you know, you're exactly the tight end we want where you're a playmaker, you know, we'll find if we just get you as it happens, um, you know, just me this year in the 2020 class. And, and basically, um, you know, it was coach Mullen just being honest with me and all the coaches being honest with me. Um, um, you know, at first I had written them off because I felt like they didn't really believe in me, but uh, that wasn't the the point or that wasn't what they were trying to do. They were really just trying to make sure that, you know, I was the right fit for them and that um, they were the right fit for me and ended up happening. And, you know, I really appreciated them being completely honest with me and the whole throughout the whole time. And, uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed that. And Coach Mullen kind of told me when I was in his office for the first, uh, the first visit I had, you know, go see everywhere, which I did. I went – like I said, I went on 25 plus visits and, you know, he was really just telling me to go see everywhere, go where you think is right for you um, in the best place for you. And, you know, I felt like that was Florida just because, um, you know, I, I absolutely love him and his coaching staff. Now you've told me before in the past, man, that you believe Florida can win championships with Dan Mullen at the helm. Uh, why do you believe that? What, what, what do you see in Dan Mullen as a head coach that, you know, you think that Florida can go back to the promised land with him leading the charge? Yeah, definitely. You know, you see how he come back in here in one year and he turns the program all the way around and, you know, winning seasons. And, you know, last year we getting close to really, really, really close, you know, a game away from a uh, college, uh, college playoff, you know, opportunity um, about probably one game out, one win yet from last year and we're in it. And, you know, even this year us being a favorite, you know, preseason polls mean nothing. Uh, but us being, you know, fourth, you know, like they think that we're going to be, you know, fourth, into the college football playoff um obviously like I said that means nothing until you back it up but you know it's just you can see how he's turned the program around you know he really buy he really lets his players make his player buy in and you know everyone wants to buy in for him and you know work for him and you know he he makes the football you know fun and you know hard work but he makes it a great time and you know makes makes you want to give it uh your all for him and I definitely see him taking Florida to the national championship soon. Absolutely, man. And uh, the last thing I got for you, Jonathan, is pretty much what is your message for Florida fans, Gator Nation as a whole, before you know you do arrive on campus? Yeah, that you know, I'm ready to work, and that um, you know I'm going to give up my offer. You know, however many many years I'm there, three to five, whatever it is, and uh, you know we're we're going to hopefully take it to uh, take it to the championship and bring one home. Jonathan, thanks for your time, man. I greatly appreciate you being able to talk with us. Uh, this full interview will be posted on Gators Territory on Friday morning. You all can check it out on our YouTube channel as well. Jonathan, stay safe during the quarantine, man, and keep up the good work. Yeah, you too. Appreciate it. Thanks, man.